Thank you very much indeed for <laughs> that. You're welcome. I, I, I've been loving listening to this new album, of which that is a song, uh, Place in Line. Uh, it's been a long time since I heard an album which contains so much good advice. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> what happens when you get old. You know, you start thinking you can tell people what to do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll come back to what the songs are about, um, but maybe let's talk. Let's start with your guitar. Let's start with what you do with your guitar. Um, I mean, it's a tool, I suppose. Is it, a, is it a songwriting tool? It's very much a tool, yeah, and it is a songwriting tool, yeah. That's, that's where the songs start. The songs start with, you know, just sort of noodling around, trying to find things that work. And then you find these little progressions and you say, okay, put a different rhythm on it, and then 
see if you can get... I mean, this is the way I write songs. It's not the way everybody writes songs, but um, get a harmonic rhythm going on. I mean, a progression, mm. you know, some sort of a... Hopefully with a noodle hook that... Uh, a noodle hook. A noodle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then um, start working on a melody against it. That And that involves just sort of scat singing mm. against things. You know, for instance, if I... I got a new one. Here's, here's one, like, like something like this. Okay, so you, let's say you get that far. So then you start working on saying, okay, how's the tune go? That's the mm. chord progression again. Mm, let's see. Okay. Then you got to write words. Let's say you get that. So then what I start doing is I start scat singing against it. And it, and see so but the whole thing is based on the guitar part. Mm. But the scat singing goes uh, for instance um, I can die a little magic. He gave me seven lotion. Find a little kid me light but he don't sick and dead and find a loving case he say my love he say my no it's almost like if you could just get close enough, you'd know what I was saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, and so it, it gradually reveals itself to you. Yeah, that's that's right. Well, eventually what happens is a line will pop out, and it's best to write that down right away. Yes. <laughs> so when you know, when you listen to a song like Every Mother's Son, which, right. which is, again, uh, a, a, a new version of which on this album, I mean, you kind of think, you think to yourself, God, this man really had to write about this, but it's not true at all, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> that one, that one more so, even though that's like a 30-year-old song, yeah. um, more so than any other, because, you know, what started me writing, getting into that, well, what happened was the line will come out, and then you say, okay, now what's what's that getting at? And then it'll, it'll, it will attach itself to something current or something that you've been thinking about recently and say, oh, you know what, I, you know what, because what you're really trying to do is get in touch with um, that part of your brain that you're really not on speaking terms with, that really is working sort of below the radar. It's a sort of a detective exercise to figure out what it's really trying to get at. Mm. And then eventually you either figure out what it's trying to get at or you come up with a plausible construct. <laughs> <laughs> that might hold water and start working from there. Yes. Going back further, sort of be, in a sense, before you, you, you lay your, your fingers on the strings of the guitar, there is also um, a tradition there, I mean, as well as a technique, as well as a, as a habit. But, but, I mean, that kind of particular style of picking that you do. Yes, and in a way, I feel often that I'm locked into that to a degree that, I, and I try to fight against it, you know. That, and I, I look for things to knock me out of that rut, you know. But essentially, I'm a, I'm a creature of of a tradition that that very much informs everything that I do. I just like to, you know, play something. That everybody says, "Oh, that's different," but it's still Chris. You know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's important too. Yes, Travis picking. Well, that's one name for a style of three-finger picking. Mostly, you know, I would call it three-finger picking, but, um, you know, that was named for Merle Travis, mm. uh, who was uh, an early practitioner of that sort of syncopated thumb and fingers style. Yes, yes. On this new album, you've got some up-tempo songs, some, which are sort of, I don't know, they're kind of pitched somewhere between jitterbug and shuffle, mm -hmm. it, yeah. it, it, it seems yeah. to me. Fair uh, enough. Um, the tempo, the, the style suggests the kind of nature of the song to you? That, I mean, these are not going to be sort of wrist slitters. These are, these are no. Good. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Not sphincter squeezers either. You know? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we can hope. Uh, one of the, the most entertaining things to do is to write a song that's contrary to the, to the tempo and, and uh, key feel. Yeah. Uh, but for instance, a song like Sitting on Top of the World. Oh, yeah. Now, there's a song that sounds like, you know, the way I do it, it's a wrist slitter, mm. you know, but the, the lyric implies that exactly the opposite. And, and uh, 
that can make a song memorable. It, it can make, and what you're looking for in a song is that one line that people will remember. Yeah, you know when they when they leave. If they can, if somebody can quote one phrase from a song, yeah, that's a winner. Yes. You know, you've yes. won. I'm so glad is another one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't doesn't do what it's supposed very, to do. Very good. Apart from the guitar, there are a lot, there are other sounds on this album, and for instance, all we need to know, I mean, is almost orchestrated, you know, with it kind is. of drum rolls and cymbal rolls and all mm -hmm. sorts of percussion and the harmonica and strings right. and how did... Now, this is a really interesting song as well. I mean, this yeah. is a kind of um, the meaning of life. I suppose if you're going it's, to do the meaning of life, you need all that you orchestration. Need all, yeah, right. It better be big. You know? <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> at least give the illusion that you're actually saying something. Um, you know, you'd be surprised at... at how little it takes to produce that much drama in that particular song it would classify it would it would qualify as drama i think but um there's basically one cello and one violin and the violin is overdubbed mm -hmm. uh twice and so you, let's say there's t two violins and a cello and there's only two two passes with the percussionist too mm. you know? one where he's doing those kind of thundering crescendo things yes. and and one where he's doing the little accents you know here and there and then one harmonica take and then of course the uh, my part is done live mm. you know, it's just the way we're working here but um the production on this record is is uh surprise you, you you might be surprised i don't know how many times you've listened to the record but you might be surprised to find how many songs really do have that string section in there hmm. there's quite a few oh really <laughs> yeah uh they're subtle in some respects and in others other places they're they're a little more apparent um but uh it's the first time that i've worked extensively with with that sort of sound and uh, it won't be the last because mm. there's a huge amount of power mm. available right there without stepping on what you're doing as a solo artist in terms of a finger pick guitar. It's, it's kind of beautiful. It, it adds all these undercurrents of feeling and emotion without confusing the notes, yes. you know, because it's a continuous sound and, and the, the listener, even the casual listener, doesn't have any trouble distinguishing the layers of sound. And it's, it's pretty amazing. I don't take any credit for it at all. I know my producer wanted to do it and I've gotten to the, to the point with him where I just let him do more or less what he wants to do. He trusts me to come up with songs that won't make him cringe and... <laughs> That's right. he, I trust him to make them sound right. And what about when you? I mean, do you miss those sounds when 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 you do these songs just with your guitar? No, I don't. Um, it's a very different thing. A live performance. I, I, in my, I think someplace in my mind, I equate the production on the record with compensation for what's missing on the on the record, for what's missing from the live experience. I mean, mm. when someone sees me live or when you see any artist live, there's a lot more going on than just the music, yeah. you know, particularly if you have a good seat. You know? <laughs> there's all sorts of things that might not register consciously, but subconsciously they affect the way you hear the music, the way the, the artist comports herself or himself on the stage, just what sort of possession they can take of their their milieu and, mm. and how much they can put the audience at ease and how they do it. And it's different for every every artist. But the good ones always learn how to, basically the most important thing is how to inspire confidence in the audience so that the audience because it's 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 a, when you're an artist when you're a solo performer one of the hardest things to learn for, at least for me was that the audience is basically on your side it's not an adversarial situation at all it can often feel that way at first when you when you're young especially but they want you to be good and the feeling of relief when they realize they don't have to hold you up it's palpable. <laughs> they, yes, they can relax. You can feel it. They relax. They say, okay, this, this, this guy's going to take me someplace nice for a little while. I don't have to support him. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to The Music Show on RN, and my guest is Chris Smither. And uh, we're, we're all relaxed now. Yeah, you know, we are. The interview's going okay. Um, <laughs> right. so, but you, 
these songs are a lot about um, first and last things. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, is, is this what you were saying at the beginning? That when you get to a certain age, you feel you can tell people things. <laughs> yeah, you do. I do anyway. And so you, you know. write you write a lot of stuff about you know. This is what I've learned. This is what I shouldn't have what, done. Uh, this what, is what I will yeah, do. Yeah. This is what you shouldn't do, but you probably will anyway. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, and and death is death. kind of oh, yeah. is, is around there. the corner on, right. on, on, of a few of these songs. Yeah. Yeah. And. Um, of course, death is around the corner for all of us all the time. I mean, it's ever so brief, but sometimes it becomes more apparent. <laughs> I like to think that there's there's nothing sad about it. I try to be more or less matter of fact, you know, just say, you know, this is this is the way I see it mm. now, and uh, and try not to be. Basically, I, you know, I, I like I think of the songs as being hopeful for the most part. Um, I certainly had a good time listening to well, the album. Well, there you go. That's all I ask. <laughs> and this isn't this is an all Chris Smither album as well. I mean, usually is, usually yeah. there's a Bob Dylan song there. Yeah, often there is. Yes. Um, but the, the only covers on on this album are covers of your own songs. Correct. Yeah. So perhaps talk a, a little about Every Mother's Son, for instance, which we mentioned earlier, which you've you've returned to. The song must have changed a bit in. 30 it has. Years. It has. The you know it's. Again, you know, you're talking about death. It's about, and, and I wrote this song probably 30 years ago, um, and it's about one of these guys who, you know, goes into a, <laughs> a McDonald's and kills, you know, 20 people. Or, well, I don't know. You know, that was mm. what inspired this song in the first place, I think. Um, thoughts along that line. And um, I think when I first recorded that song, there was a kind of mm, emotional urgency to it, uh, drama. And looking back now at the the second version this newest version there's a great deal more resignation because it's happened quite a lot that sort of thing in the last 30 years as well yes and your and your own perspective of it changes you know with not only with the with having experienced it over and over again at least in the news but also with you know the the different perspective of of a later age you know we you look at it and you say okay is this going to be the end of the world? Probably not. Do I like it? No, but there it is. Uh, having said that, you know, uh, the record came out, and then two months later uh, in the U.S., we had one of the most, most horrific of these mass shootings that has happened in, in quite some time, and, and that was pure coincidence. But it kind of alarmed me a bit at the yes. time, but you know, what can you do? Well, absolutely. Which is sort of what the song is exactly says. what the song is about. What can you do? <laughs> <laughs> Probably something, but we haven't figured it out yet. The album is called Hundred Dollar Valentine. Um, it's the latest one from Chris Smith, and you're going to do another song from it for us. I am, um, and, 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 and this one is much more of a classic blues uh, of a traditional sort, and um, I thought it was interesting in that it. It has a close parallel to one of the other older songs that I did on this record, which is uh, I Feel the Same, um, which is a song I probably wrote, I don't know, at least 40 years ago. It has the same thematic drive to it, but from a much different, (laughs) and again, kind of a more resigned perspective. (laughs) (laughs) I know you know what you got to do Knowing it, showing it's just a part of it But I got a clue It ain't what I know that makes me blue It's what I thought I knew I know that losing That's just part of the game I'm sure I'll lose more But all the same It ain't what 
I lost that made me sad It's what I thought I had very much, Chris. You're welcome. RN, your world unfolding. <laughs> 